in today's video we are going to talk about a review or we are going to talk about very many things first of all we are going to talk about contracts we are going to talk about contracts we are going to talk about working hours for security guards we are going to talk about overtime we talk about accommodation we talk about induction or training of security guards we talk about uh, transportation we talk about salary we talk about day off and uh, rest time then we talk about uh, vacation leaves then we talk about sick leave we talk about gratitude and lastly we shall talk about what we call the medical and health of security cards in Qatar. Tune into this video. Hi guys, welcome to this channel. If it's your first time to come across this channel, consider subscribing. By the way, in today's video, we are going to talk about an overview. We are going to look at uh, security guards. Very many questions have been coming in about security guards in Qatar. They ask about salary, they ask about everything. In today's video, we want to, to make a recap of everything that you need to know about security guarding, security, uh, security companies, and all you need to know about a security guard in Qatar. Such that for, we, we do not have to have any query because very many questions have been coming in about security guard, about salary, about overtime, about overworking time. And even those people that are thinking to come into the country, this is your time to get a full overview of who is a security guard in Qatar and how the security, uh, security guarding in Qatar looks like. First of all, before we even go in anything, first of all, number one, let us number one look at what we call contracts. Some of us we move from our country of origin and we do sign the first contracts. That first contract that you sign with that company is what describes what you are going to do, what role you are going to do at that time. And normally, after being given a job offer, for you to accept that job offer, you up after accepting that job offer, they will give you what you call a contract. That contract will be pertaining to what you are going to do as you come to Qatar. So normally at times I keep on telling people, when we get that job uh, uh, job offer, look at the job offer. Yes, we accepted the job offer. But again, look at the contract closely. Understand everything in the contract. Yes, that is at... A place of the origin then make sure they give you that copy of contract and when you come into the country in case you you you, you manage to give any visa and you inside Qatar make sure the same contract that you signed in your country should be the same contract it should not be altered out in any way because if you not pay if you don't play close attention to that same contract that you signed, then you may end up doing what you are not supposed to do. Remember that contract, it will specify how much you'll be earning. It will specify your day off. It will specify your medical, what your, your entitlements. So make sure that same contract that you signed in your home country should be the same contract that you see as you reach your country of destination or as you reach Qatar in that company that you're going to work for. That is number one. Number two, we look at what you call working hours. Very many people have been asking about working hours in Qatar for the security guards. This time we are talking about the security guards. I know. Remember, for security guards, there are different working hours. Yes, in your contract, you may have what you call 12 hours duty depending which i normally which i mostly know that most of the security companies on your job offers it is they say 12 hours of duty but remember as you go to this company these companies have what you call contract it will depend where you are likely placed if for example you get an opportunity to work in a contract that works nine hours then probably you're going to work nine hours for that matter but however, on some suggestions that, remember your contract was 12 hours. To some companies, if they get a contract that works for 9 hours, for this extra 4 hours, they will look at where 
to to put you such that you can cover up so that they can pay you a full 12 hours that is number one number two it will depend on the projects that you are going to work for there are some projects that are really good for example when you look at here in Qatar projects that are, are, are projects that are moving to what we call government entities for example government hospitals for example government schools for example that matters that deal with governmental uh, governmental buildings or government occupations you find that you'll be working for what you call the agreed hours let's say for example nine hours you'll be working for nine hours in that particular case and even its benefits in one way are so different that is if you are lucky enough and you are put in that contract you'll get a lot of benefits uh, including food, including laundry, including day offs every 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 month, and uh, you pay in time because that is a different contract per the per, per that is a different contract per the your security company. So sometimes these government entities or these government uh, offices do give strict conditions if they are giving contract to your security company that hired you. So it will make sure, to start with the contract, it will make sure it fulfill what is being demanded from that, uh, from that client at that time. So the working hours, it will differ depending on what particular uh, uh, projects you are working with. There are some projects where people are working eight hours, and they're working eight hours, and they're getting four days off in a month. And that's pretty very good. And there's are some people who are working projects that are working for more hours, 12 hours, without even day off, it is possible. So it will be how likely you will be in that particular project. Then we look at another one. Number three is what we call overtime and public day offs in Qatar. When we look at security companies, like any other company, yes, you are entitled to what you call public holiday payoff and you're entitled to overtime but remember some of these companies calculate overtime in a different format each one to calculate their own overtime so what does it mean that you if you're so much lucky enough that overtime will be calculated rightly according to the government calculation if you're not lucky enough this company will calculate its overtime the way it wants to be, or it wants to be calculated. That is also possible. But remember still when we are talking about what you call overtime, you are entitled to overtime. Let's say your contract was for 12 hours, and you were working more than 12 hours. You are entitled to it. You are entitled to your overtime, per what you call the government laws or what you call the labor laws in Qatar here. You are entitled to that. Then when you look at public holidays, for the public holidays, we shall look at Eid al-Fitri, we shall look at Eid al-Doha, then we shall also look at uh, the national days. Those days are supposed to be paid as according to the government. Because remember, during these days, as a, uh, per right now, per the government procedure, all workers in the private sector are supposed to work what you call six hours during those days. So meaning that the rest of the time that will be worked will be a double pay. Let's say, for example, the first six hours mandatory by the government is off. That means the rest of the hours will have to be a double pay for that day. But some companies may not give you that money or may even give you a smaller portion of what is being required of you. That is possible in one way or the other. So when you are coming and when definitely that comes, you know that is what we're talking about, we're talking about your expectation and the reality I did of, of it all. The, the expectation will be that you are entitled to it, but the reality will come in it at the end of it all. You are given less than what you are supposed to get. So we probably know that there are some good companies that definitely will pay it up. There are some good companies who will pay little, who will pay half of it, even a quarter of it all, and there are some that companies that will not pay at all then having what you call excuses but remember what i keep on telling guys for this kind of situation if you know you are entitled to it and you are not paid have that record have that record that i was not paid on this and i was entitled to this what happens 
is by keeping what you call your payment receipt is very, very important here in Qatar. Keep that payment receipt. In case they say to abscond that we paid this and this and this amount of money, then you have your uh, payment receipt and they will show what, how it is indicated or where it is indicated. Then number four, we look at what you call accommodations. Yes, if it's a good company, it will be a good company. If it is a bad company, definitely it's going to be a bad company. We don't have to hide over it. It's going to be a bad company. But remember, accommodations is something that uh, concerns the personal hygiene and concerns the, 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 the guards' welfare. There are some companies that take the guards' welfare as a priority and that those companies that you do not want to know, they only need you to go to duty only. That is all. They don't care about your life. So what do you do in that scenario is take care of taking care of yourself. When we look at accommodation, there are some companies where you have partitions and people are sleeping in rooms for more, more than six people or four people. People are sleeping eight people with a small storage of area, with a crowded area. That is possible for some companies. And there are those companies that will have what you call a decent accommodation. Very clean environment, very good cooking, uh, cooking kitchen, you know. That is for all is being provided because it cares about your welfare. It cares about you are, you are part of the team or you are part of the company. It cares about that welfare or what you call a security guard becomes a priority in one way because you go and make the money. So you definitely expect to find that those some companies have accommodations that are really very good, smart, very clean, and everything arranged partially in order. And that those companies that will have accommodations that are so in distance that you may not even want to live in those accommodations. And they do exist. Most of you, you know where your accommodations, most of you, you know your security accommodations, where they are. You know how you're sleeping. You know how your kitchens look like. So that is definitely what you'll expect. That's where we go back to the version, expectation versus the reality. Then we look at another one. Number five, we look at what you call induction training. The security guards that will give you what you call induction or training. There are those companies that will give you that induction or training as you arrive in the country. And there are those that will not give you at all. The first day you come into the country, the next day you are reporting on duty. Very green, very green, you do not know anything. So what happens if you are only transcended into the country today and tomorrow they are giving you duty? That means for that format, you will only have to use yourself as what you call use an extra sense to see that you can survive and maneuver yourself in what you have in duty time or what location you're being given to. So it's quite very important that it is possible in one way or the other. We look at terminations. Terminations. Terminations normally happen in Qatar if there's a breach of the contract. If, for example, an employee breaches the contract, which was contrary signed. So there may be termination in one or the other, but it has termination has not been that so much common. And definitely something that you need to know as a security guard, or you as a security guard, or you as a migrant that you're being recruited from another country to come and look for a living. Know the do's and don'ts of that country. Know the do's and don'ts of a Qatar. If you get to respect the law, the law will respect you, you will not fall in trouble. You'll not fall in trouble with the law. So you know in the do's and the rules, the site instructions, follow what people your spirit has attained. The rest of things will just work out in that format or work out in any uh, its way. We talk about number seven, we talk about salary. Yes, we talk about salary, salary in Qatar of security guards. These salaries of security guard varies in one company to another company, from overtime to public day offs. Uh, to public rest times, to approved government rest, uh, government uh, approved holidays. But remember, the basic salary is one thousand in Qatar for all security guards, and for all employees, the startup salary is one thousand. That's one thousand is for one hour for eight hours, meaning that. On top of that, if your company is not providing for you food, it will add 300 on top of your basic salary. So meaning that eight hours worked, you are earning 1,300. 
But in case another scenario, that company does not give you what you call accommodation, which is so, which is so rare with the security companies. Most of the security companies do provide accommodation. So we just give it as an, an, an addition that in case that company does not provide accommodation for you, that means on top of 1,300, it will add you more 500 Qatarian. That is for to cater for what you call your trans, uh, to cater for what you call your accommodation period. But remember, the entitlement, the basic salary is supposed to be 1,000 and food allowance 300, then also what you call accommodation allowance 500, which makes a total of 1,800 Qatar real. But remember, also still salary will also be dependent on what you call projects. There are some projects that are paying off. Let's say for example, this you have a project with the Hamad Hospital, definitely you'll be entitled to whatever you are entitled. Monthly pay salary in time, you'll be entitled to rest day time, you'll be entitled to run washing. So probably you'll have those benefits. You are working at the airport. The airport you'll also have other benefits, like people who are working outside in other areas. So you definitely need to know that after you, the agreed period that you agreed, let's say you agreed with our company that you're going to be working for nine hours. So the nine hours, that is the rest of the time, in case they are to employ for you for more three hours, then that will become what you call overtime. Right? Then normally transportation in Qatar for security guard is normally provided by what you call companies. Companies do provide uh, security, uh, security transportation from your area of accommodation to your workplace and from your workplace to accommodation. There are those good companies that will even provide bus for their uh, staff to go shopping, especially if it's a Friday and they're all there, they will give them a bus. But if you find that company that is not good, you definitely know you are going to take care of yourself or you are going to do the rest of things yourself to see that you can maneuver or to see that you can live and live and go uh, with while chasing what you call your dreams. Then we look at our day off and rest time. Yes, this is very important. Uh, uh, it's something that I've seen in Qatar and something that I want to take up, uh, talk about is when you have the expectation versus the reality. Yes, it do happens. Some of the security companies, they are those that give the day off, sincerely speaking. They give you as an agree. If your job contract they agree to give you two days off, they will give you two days off every month. And that those they, those companies are not giving are giving day offs completely with a lot of excuses. We don't have relievers. Uh, we don't have this, and they will definitely don't give you day offs. So you may find yourself you are working more time. Let's say for example, you work thirty days without off. But remember, this is we are not we are not immortal. We are human beings, and the body needs to rest. So normally. It is what happens. Some companies may give you day off. Some companies may not give you. And some companies may give you may not give you day offs, but still that a time that is being worked, it will be calculated as what we call overtime, and it will be given to you at that street. We look at what we, call, we look at number ten is called the annual leave. Yes, the annual leave is very important for security guards. And when we talk about the annual leave. Uh, the annual leave here in Qatar, the, the, uh, your employer is supposed to give you a ticket, a return ticket to and fro from your country in case you are going to have what we call an annual leave. And normally annual leave days, it may to some extent be uh, decided upon by your employer depending on which role you are playing or which role you are working in. But all in all, you are entitled to what you call annual leave and you are entitled to what you call a two-way ticket that is paid for you and uh, what you call vacation or what you call the annual vacation leave monies uh, is also needs to be given to you such that you can go and live in your country or rest off in your country in a very good, good way and a very good manner. Then we talk about sick leave. Yes, sick leave. Uh, most of the companies uh, care about what you call the employee's welfare. You get sick, the company will drive you until the hospital. Then it will definitely bring you back and it will give you what you call your sick leave. Sick leave uh, down and at the end of it all you'll be paid. But there are some companies that do not care about 
uh, your well-being. They don't know whether you want to be sick, they don't know what you've been sick, whether you've not been sick or you are going to get sick. They do not know that. They only want you to be duty, they only want you to go to duty. So you find that this has created a lot of uh, dissatisfaction, a lot of uh, uh, to different groups and different people, then they definitely try to run away from what you call the security jobs and running into other, uh, other options or other options in one way or the other. Then we look at uh, number 13. Number 13 is what you call the gratitude payment. When we talk about gratitude, gratitude to display to a worker that completes a given contract that as that was agreed upon. If you con to contribute, if you can uh, finish up your contract, you as uh, you uh, you agreed with your work with your employer for two years, then your employer will have to give you a return ticket back to your country. Then also will have to provide for you what you call gratitude. Then last one, number 14, we look at what you call medical or health card and insurance. First of all, when you talk about a medical, one thing the equal requirement for you to have is what you call an health card. But remember, when we are talking about health cards, some companies don't want to give out health cards, sincerely speaking. And if you also do not care, you may find that you are spending a lot of money with uh, what you call private medical care and yet you will access those kind of um, uh, medicals at what you call subsist, subsidized level or subsidized amount of money, which is especially very good. So uh, health is very important, but you also need to take care of yourself as you need to look at the way how you are definitely fit. Because no one is with you here no one wants to know it's only you and uh, and what you want to do that will make you move on to the next level hope i've tried to share up something for you and we've done a recap a total recap of what you call security campus in Qatar. thank you so much see you again in the next video as we try to look for for more of that important information this makes from the next creation team